Guys, very welcome to this third video on plane and descriptive geometry. There are five models here on screen in front of me, which I'm going to be um, flicking through on SolidWorks and then um, drawing through on paper. And I'm hoping to kind of teach you the, um, the slightly more advanced work. So we've already looked at the basic objects. We've looked at the oblique planes. We have looked at true inclination to horizontal and vertical. We have rebatted about the horizontal and vertical. And we have found um, the true shapes of cut surfaces. So now I'm going to just take it on a little bit and I'm going to be kind of exploring um, the oblique plane and well, simply inclined plane and oblique plane when used as section planes that are cutting through objects. So I've just started off with very basic, taken it on to what's still relatively easy and then kind of upped the difficulty then for these three, especially this these last two, I suppose. So um, there'll be a little bit of uh, learning involved in, th in this for us. Um, if I just go right back here, I'll get rid of all those uh, four models at the end and take it right back to the beginning here. And we will go for this guy here. So what we have here is a pentagonal, regular pentagonal based prism right here. And um, off the prism, we can see I put a blue pentagon on each end. We have our green, our red, our yellow, and our dark gray surfaces. And then there's also a surface down the ground. So what's happening here is this. That prism is being cut by a plane. And it is not an oblique plane. It is a simply inclined plane. And the reason I know this is when I look in at the elevation of this object, the plane can be seen as an edge view. I'm just seeing the whole plane as one single line. And on paper, we can see the prism. And I'll be flicking back to a worksheet now in just a minute. On paper, we can see the prism view in elevation exactly as it is here, where we have the blue right surface, the red in the top, and the green in the bottom. And when we look down to the plan, it's just like this. We have the two top surfaces, yellow and red. Um, what we're looking for in this case here on paper, we were, we're going to be working on this work, particular worksheet. It's going to be just to find what the profile looks like. So determine the shape of the, of the cut surface. So um, it's really um, a relatively easy little one to start with. And the important thing to note here is if you can see the plane as an edge view, well, we can see all of the cut points. So if it's if that plane sections through the object and it cuts at that point right there and maybe this point at the front which is also mirrored around here to the point at the back as we look straight in and then it's the two points on the ground so if we just if i just flick this on a little bit here that's the profile right there that it makes as it sections through the object and it's very obvious to see where all the points come from here on solid works and That's going to be the remaining, we'd say, if we were to say that the left side of the object was cut off, well, that's all of the parts that are being sectioned and cut off. On paper, then, we're also asked to um, find the true shape of the uh, cut surface. So that, that's quite easy as well. We'll do that using, we could use an auxiliary looking at 90 degrees to the edge view, or we could use a rebattement and flat it down, flatten it down onto the ground. So... That's about it. That's the model for this one. Nice, easy little one to start off with before we start getting into, um, well, there's one more easier one coming up as well. And then we'll get into the harder questions. That's it for this part. Let's get back onto paper and see what this looks like, what this question is laid out like. So here we have that same question on paper. And um, I've just added a small bit of colour just to uh, reference the same same surfaces as we had there on solid work. So in as I said, in the elevation here, we have our um, we have our green surface down low, our red surface, and then the blue pentagon for the end. And in plan, we have the uh, red and yellow top surfaces. If the horizontal trace here, if the HT, if that stands perfectly straight up, perpendicular to the to the uh, vertical plane, well, it's a simply inclined plane. It's inclined here, a simply inclined angle to the horizontal. So we can see all of the true points where that plane sections through the object. If I can see those points, I can project them down to plan. So that right there is the top of the whole object projected down to plan. This one, 
and then there's one on the ground. This top point is here, where the red and yellow intersect. I'll just use a little fine liner for that, that's going to be point one on my cut surface. If I work towards the back of the object, it goes back to point number two, which is out here at the end of the yellow, number two. It goes down to the ground then at number three, which will be here, three. It goes across the ground and out to the front where this, it hits this green surface, which is here, number four. And then it comes out to the front, out to number five here, the point on the line of intersection between the uh, red and green, number five. And then it returns back up to one. So that's going to be the profile here. So I'm going to put that in nice and heavy. So four, five. One to two, and then finally two to three. There's the profile of the um, of the sh of the cut surface resulting from this plane. But that doesn't answer our question yet. They're saying determine the intersection of the given object in the cutting plane is done. So I have that much done, and also determine the true shape of the cut surface. So that's that's actually quite an easy one because we have viewed up here, and we have seen. The plane as an edge view. If you see an edge view of the plane, well, right there is the point view of the horizontal trace. So we can very simply take from the point view of our horizontal trace up there to number one and swing it onto the ground, and then we can take two and five, swing them onto the ground. We can we have already, we have just actually I forgot one label there. I mean let's go that's number three and four. Number three and four have not moved. So three on the ground and four on the ground. They're on the trace, they've stayed on the trace, and it has not moved. Two and five have moved to there, and one has moved someplace down here. What about the movement? Well, everything moves perpendicular to the hinge line. So five moved out, one moved out, and two moved out. And there we go. Four stayed where it was. That, be, that one there is where five came to. That was number one right there. Three joins up to number two right there. And two up to one at the top. And there we go. There's our. There's the true shape of the intersection between the simply inclined plane and the pentagonal prism right there. We're going to get back onto SolidWorks now for a minute. That's that nice uh, little starter done there. Back to SolidWorks, we look at our next object and we'll maybe um, move on then. We'll move on now to the oblique planes. And here in our next question, we have a square based prism standing on the horizontal plane. There's the horizontal trace that can be just about seen there on the blue horizontal plane. There's the vertical trace up here and here we have the oblique plane now that oblique plane cuts through the prism it sections the prism and it basically cuts off what's out here and there we have it so that should give us good understanding of what's happening so the oblique plane stands in there the prism sits on the ground and it goes up through the oblique plane and the oblique plane sections the prism now in previous and in upcoming examples, what we would be doing here, we'd be finding maybe edge views of the plane so that you can see exact points where it cuts the object, but that would require auxiliary views. And there is a second method that we don't need to be using auxiliary views. We've already practiced this method, so we'll just see it here once more. Um, there's the plan of the object just projected down. The plan is still a square. If it's a prism and if the plane leaves part of the profile any part of the profile then of the full profile i should say then that means that the plan remains the same even though it is cutting the object at the on, along these uh, long long profile lines right here if i look in at the plan of the object the plan still remains the same it still uh, it still remains a square on plan view um the elevation of the object then is here and there we have it. pretty pretty simple object really we have the outline of 
all the surfaces plus the hidden detail line here representing the back edge. Now, the next thing I've dropped in here on SolidWorks is I've just dropped in that is the profile. So that is the cut surf the cut surface that results from this oblique plane here. And how do we work with this? How do we actually make this work and bring the points to elevation now? What we'll do is this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use section planes to do this. So if I bring in a section view parallel to my top plane, and if I bring it up to hit this point, will it do it for me? No, I'll just bring it up manually up to this point here. Okay. A section plane parallel to the top plane going through that point will show me exactly where that point is in elevation. So a horizontal section plane through each one of the four key points that I need right now. So the four key points would be this one here, two here, number three up top and number four there at the back. If I can do a horizontal section plane through each one, that would give me the resulting point here in the elevation. Now, what does that look like on paper? Well, the resulting cut that I have right here, a horizontal section through an oblique plane will give you a line parallel to the horizontal trace. So this cut right here is parallel to the horizontal trace. Let's see what that looks like. If I just flip down another step here, that's the first thing, okay? A line parallel from the point to the horizontal trace, and that is the point as it appears in plan. So if we look down on plan view, that's where the point appears, parallel to the horizontal trace. Then, of course, I need to bring it up to my vertical trace and across. So instead of just learning off parallel to the trace up and across, you see it. OK, you can see the horizontal section plane and how it's working. And this is how we project through our views right here. OK, and that gives me one point on my profile. If I go ahead and do that for the second point out here to the front of the object right there parallel to the trace up and across i'll do it for the third point and i'll do it for the finally for the fourth point right up the top where am i now okay if i can do that section plane for all of my points well i should be able to get all of the points in elevation so if we just look down here watch the plan first of all parallel to the trace from each one of my points up onto the vertical trace and across onto the corresponding line there up to the vertical trace and across to the corresponding lines and that will give me the cut surface as it appears in elevation so let's get back onto paper and let's get this one drawn now there's the question set up <coughs> on this worksheet, my square base prism and my uh, elevation of the prism and then my two traces. If you're tr trying to do this question at home, set it up with any measurements at all, it really doesn't matter, you know, as long as it fits in the A4 page like I have here, use a bigger A3 if you like, but there's probably no need, um, any sizes at all. There's my HT and my VT. Um, the, again, the, the the traces don't don't really matter either. Um, you know the, the traces don't matter. Now that the higher you make that VT, the taller your elevation will need to be. Um, so I kept my VT down quite an angle there, and I cut it through that of the object. And again, didn't have to do that, but any question will do here. It's all about the principles. Let's go ahead and do what we saw there in SolidWorks. So we're looking for horizontal sections. So I want to do a, a range of horizontal sections here we practiced these already in the earlier videos so let's just see if we can see how do we find the elevation of the profile of the cut using horizontal sections so first of all I have already set my adjustable parallel to the trace so I'm going to go parallel to the horizontal trace from each point now I'm just going to you know I'm going to do all four at the same time here and just run them all three and Four, and that one just happens to coincide there that is no problem parallel to the horizontal trace is the first job and I'll just mark in my parallel marks here the second job is <coughs> vertically up to hit the vertical trace
And finally, the third one. Horizontally across to hit the corresponding point. So from this point, I've sectioned a section across. So from there, horizontally across to hit the corresponding point. This one here hits from the point, I, sh I should number, I suppose that's point one, two, three, and four. So one ends up being here. What did I do next? I actually did four next, which is here at the front, sectioned up and across to find point four, three, or sorry, I'll go for two, up, across, and that's onto the hidden line, which is right here, is number two, and finally number three here at the end, sectioned parallel to the trace up to here, and across. And that is number three. And the profile looks like this. Just join the dots. So four, three, one joins to four, one to two, and two to three. So one, two, three, four, one. That is the full. Now that looks just like it did on SolidWorks. So there we go. We have a hidden edge right up here at the back of this one. And then we have point one here. Now that's the <coughs> the profile created on the object when it is sectioned by the oblique plane exactly as given and we have solved that little question there using horizontal sections that can be a very common way that it could be asked for a short question maybe leave insert you know so a section a short question and it has come up before and this has also come up before where they've asked to um include a little there's a little tricky sketch to you to complete as well you really would have to understand this you can't just learn these things off so understanding where all of these parallel lines up to the trace and across where it comes from and what the background is so that was my little SolidWorks introduction to this question um, we're going to go back to SolidWorks again now we're going to have a look at uh, three more difficult questions here and um, we'll take it from there including uh, much much more complex objects on this next example here we're looking at a hexagonal based prism it is sitting on the horizontal plane. It's a little bit of a distance away from the vertical plane there. We can see the HT and the VT, the horizontal and vertical traces. And now I'll just drop in the oblique plane. The oblique plane cuts the object just as you can see here. So it's, it sections through the object. Now for this question, we could use the same method we used last time if it was just a question of finishing the elevation and finding the profile. Uh, what we're what we're tasked with doing here on the on the worksheet that I'm going to draw through in a few minutes, what we're tasked to go through is this: determine the intersection of the given object and the cutting plane. So, on paper, find the profile of intersection just like it is shown here on SolidWorks, and also determine the true shape of the cut surface. That's where the little extra is going to be coming in. So, we could determine this intersection using our horizontal sections method, just like we did last time. But if I want a method that will so, uh, serve me a little bit more going forward, I want to use an auxiliary view. So what we're going to aim to do is this. We're going to aim to find an edge view of the whole oblique plane. And that will be found in a view looking right up along, look up along the horizontal trace and find the horizontal trace as a point view here, which gives you an edge view of the oblique plane. And it shows us all of the true heights where it cuts through each one of these um, edges of the object. After that, then, we're going to be finding our true shape. But first of all, that, uh, or that uh, auxiliary view showing the oblique plane as an edge view. So we look up along the trace. Now, on, on SolidWorks here, my horizontal plane will need to extend out because I'm looking up along the trace. So I'll extend out my horizontal plane right there. 
we project up along the trace, parallel to the trace, looking along it, pick a point to stop, and then drop in your X1, Y1, and then we're going to need um, an auxiliary plane. So our AVP, auxiliary vertical plane up there. Just like before in previous videos, take any random point in at all along your vertical trace, and drop it onto the plane, onto the horizontal, project it, and mark it as a set height. So, where are we now? There it is. So I've taken a random point, I've dropped it down to the X, Y, or down to plan, I've projected it, and I've marked it at the same height as it was in the original elevation, because we have an original elevation here, we have an auxiliary over here. And that point will give me an edge view of the plane, and there we go. Next thing is we can project up the object and draw it up there. So project up the, all of the points from the plan in the object. So we have our hexagon base here and draw the object. So there's the object in at full height. Um, I think what I've done next here is I've just kind of dropped in the actual surfaces of the object here with a bit of color on them, which will correspond to the 3D view here. Now, what's next? What we can see now is we can see where all of the points are. We can see exactly where the profile is being cut. So if we can see that, we can take all those points, take all of the cut points, including the hidden detail ones at the back, and we can project them back down again. This is only in 3D, and that gives me my profile. Oh, just for a bit of clarity here to see what's happening, I've cut the object off so we can see that the whole object is missing there we've cut it off and um, it really helps with visualizing the object I think the next thing we're going to do that that will have to be taken in onto an elevation I've um, left out the elevation this just not to overload the drawing with with lines here but those points then when they're seen as true heights over in my auxiliary I can take the true height of each point along each line and I can mark it back in my elevation. The next thing then is determining the true shape of the cut surface. So working with, I, I, I worked again here just with any random point which was the point P that was originally drawn back here let's say, point on the vertical trace, rebat. Rebat it down around onto the ground and project it on down to the plan view. Everything that hinges or rebats, rebats at 90 degrees to the hinge line so projecting from the point in the xy out at 90 degrees to the hinge line right out here and then that gives me a true shape of the plane so you know i just step back i step back a step or two there that gives me a true shape of the plane right there next that is the plane rebatted down onto the horizontal so what i want to do next is i want to rebat all of these key points so one two three four five six i want to rebat all six of those down onto the horizontal as well so we'll see that up here i think i put it in the right color this time there's all of the key points rebatted about this pivot point right here so all of the key points were rebatted down onto the horizontal plane and then they are projected back down here to plan so we'll be doing all this on paper in just a minute so they're rebatted down, projected down the plan. Then what? Well, I want to show that rebatment, which I have up here in my auxiliary view. I want to show that in 3D now, because that's what's happening in reality. So I've just put in a bunch of planes here that will take a few seconds to load, and then I start rebatting. So everything rebats out perpendicular. If I look down on the plan here now and see these coming in. Rebatment, which is actually a compass swing about this point here on the trace, just looks like, in plan, a perpendicular line to the hinge line. Because that's what a rebatment is. Everything moves perpendicular to the hinge line. There's the center point of for the rebatment. And then we have our rotation out. Repeat that process for all of the other points here. Everything rebatting out onto the ground. So... The red arcs we can see here is the 3D version of what we did up here in 2D. 
and on paper we can't see those arcs as arcs we see them as we look down the plan we see them as just perpendicular lines going out through the horizontal trace at 90 degrees to the trace final step here <coughs> is there that's the true shape of the object and it sits there on the ground so let's get back to paper and let's go ahead and do, work through this question here we have our auxiliary in we have our edge view of the oblique plane and we have a rebatment of the plane and the true shape of the surface now on this <coughs> question sheet here just like in SOLIDWORKS you can see that there is a um, hexagon shown in plan and there in elevation is the prism hidden lines are also shown for us so it's all all well set up there for us what i'm going to do is i'm going to take i and I, i'm quite sure here now before i even start that it's going to go over the text but i'm going to go with it i'm going to take the angle of my horizontal trace right here i'm going to set up parallel and i'm going to go ahead i'm going to look up along the horizontal trace so my viewing direction is looking straight up along the horizontal trace right there now I'm not going to go far I'm going to drop in my XY line here I'm just going to skip the outside of the object right there with the XY line or X1 Y1 there's my X1 Y1 line I'm then going to take my I want an edge view of the plane so I just need a point on the vertical trace there point P I want to find where point P lies in plan so it lies on the XY line there in plan so that's point P as it sits in plan right there and I'll project up point P the next thing then is if I projected it from a plan it is an elevation and the points are the same height in all elevations based on that plan There's point P. And what does that give me? That gives me an edge view of the oblique plane. So if I looked up along the horizontal trace, I get a point view of the horizontal trace. And I get an edge view of the oblique plane. I don't have much space here for notes. I did all of these notes and all of the true inclinations to the horizontal edge view of the horizontal edge view of oblique. I've all of those notes put into previous videos, so I'm not going to go over the basics of that again now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and bring up the object and put it sitting in there in its position. Projecting it, of course, at the same angle as all other projections, parallel to the horizontal trace. I'm not going to worry yet about hidden detail and solid detail. Let's just project everything up. And then the height of the prism is to be found here in the elevation. And I'm just going to, I'm going to drop that in lightly now because it's going way up into the text. So parallel to the X1, Y1 line because it sits up and it is actually parallel to the line and let's now go ahead and I'm going to just add a little bit of continuous line and hidden detail wherever relevant this next one here is at the back of the object so that's hidden this next one here is solid next one hidden and finally a solid to finish there we go that's the object as it sits up there um i'm going to just add just that little bit of color here um as i looked up at the elevation and i know if i want to just keep it the same as solid works there as the object we were looking at that was my red plane on my red surface right there and that is from here to here so that area is all red right there that's just a visible one of course there are more surfaces at the back of the object here represented by the hidden lines but I, I'd I like to add that little bit of color I think it helps to understand and it helps to reference afterwards when we get on to more difficult questions there's my red 
to the left of the red was my blue one right here. So that's an edge view of the blue surface. And that sits there. And where is that? That's all we can see here on the left hand side. And again, not forgetting that there is a hidden a hidden line at the back. And then what was next to the right of it was a yellow surface. So this one here. And I can't see it up here at all. That was yellow. Finally, I think the last one was green, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think that's green there. Um, just here, this one, which I can't see in my auxiliary view, but I can see it just there in the elevation. That one is green. Now, I've kept the colours pretty light there in elevation because, you know, a lot of it is going to be cut off because the whole object is sectioned. Now, the colour allows me to do this, it just allows me to very quickly visualise what's happening. I need to find my intersection points, I need to find my cut points and I need to finish this elevation. Before I work on a head to any true shape, I want to get my elevation. Determine the intersection of the given object in the cutting plane. Well, that is actually the line of intersection, it's the cutting plane shown as an edge and the intersection is going to be shown here in the elevation. So. The heights up to the points in the cutting plane are all going to be true heights as seen in the elevation. If I number this, I just might work and start uh, anywhere at all. I start there in the yellow, in the, the yellow one, two, three, four, five, and six. The height at, along one is up here along one. That's two, that's three, four, five, and six in the hidden. The height up along one is marked up along one. I could also mark them all up here I suppose. Number one, number two between yellow and red, number three between red and blue, number four at the end of the blue, number five is hidden at the back, and number six is hidden at the back. Let's go for number two. Height of number two, marked along edge number two. Height of number three, marked on three. Number four is just, it's, it's actually too small for me to, to set my compass there. So I'm gonna just measure it there and it's about, it's about two, two millimeters only. It's number four. Number five could even be too small again, but we'll go for it. Number five is no, it's no problem. Five marked along five. And is this the last one? I think it is number six. Marked up along edge six. And let's join the dots. From one out to two. Down to three, down to four, four up to number five, five up to number six, and six returning back to one right there. So there we go. That is the object as it appears in elevation. Um, what I could do now is really we could rub out a lot of this color that's shown here because there's a completely different elevation shown that i didn't set up this worksheet it was set up for me ideally you'd have all of this done in a really light maybe 5h pencil and you'd be able to just work with your h tint heavy in the base profile only um the color will do a good job though in differentiating between the correct and incorrect uh lines that actually exist on this object here so if I just take a few seconds to just add that little bit of colour back in and redefine that the, at the lines it should be stopped at now. There we go. And <clears throat> what we also have is this, we have this uh, 
that is the cut surface as it appears there in elevation. So we could have easily solved this question so far. This much of the question could have been solved using the same methods as last question there. And if I just wanted to prove that for a second, I would take a horizontal section which results in a cut parallel to the horizontal trace. Let's just go with true point three to hit the X Y line up to the vertical trace and across to hit point three. So horizontal section method would work as well to find this profile right here. That wouldn't be a problem, but. It wouldn't help us in the next part, which is, that's the first part done, determine the true shape of the cut surface. So let's go ahead and do our rebattent. And we need a bigger X for more than that, because the rebattent is going to go from the point view of the trace and the edge view of the plane, we will rebat it down onto the ground. First point I'm going to rebat, and I'm not even asked for this, but I'm going to find the true shape of the oblique plane first of all. Point P, which was in plan, and then the auxiliary, where is it? It's this one right here. I don't want to mistake my two points that are close to each other. I'm going to rebash point P first of all. So point P was the point on the vertical trace that defined my plane. That's point P and I'll just dash that around. I don't want to get confused when it comes to the uh, true shape. That's point P. Rebash it onto the ground. Project it down to plan. And taken from its plan position perpendicular to the trace or to the hinge line and that defines the vertical trace in this rebatted position that goes from my horizontal trace true point P and that is my vertical trace as it sits in its rebatted view that's just an extra and once again just like I said in my last video that is the true angle from the vertical to the horizontal trace right there so let's go ahead and do the rebattement so from the point view of the horizontal trace right there right up I'm gonna I'm not even gonna start worrying about numbering these now at the moment I'm gonna just project everything I'm gonna rebat everything I should say rebat everything down onto the ground there and I'll do, I'll do the numbering after. If you're not comfortable with doing it that way, we'll go ahead and do one point at a time. I'm going to just do them all now. And this is getting really small now. No. So I'm going to number them now. That was number one was the largest one. Number two was the next one in. Number six was the next one. I dashed P so you wouldn't uh, confuse me now. Number three was next. Number five was next. Number four was the last one here. Let's go ahead and project them all down to plan. Starting in here with number four, five, three, six, two, and one. And with my adjustable says to the horizontal trace angle, we go 90 degrees to that. And again, I, I have a habit of just projecting everything and just figuring out my points after. Doesn't suit someone that's not as comfortable with drawing now. Do it one at a time if you feel like it. And time to start uh, working on our points. The first line in here is number four. The second line out is number five. The next one out is number three. The next one out, but of course not P this time. The one outside P is number six, which will be here. Next one out is number two. And the last one at the end there is number one. As I said there a minute ago now, and I really want to stress this. What I just did there is fine when it works out and if you're really comfortable with this. But if you want to rebat one at a time or rebat them all onto the ground and project number one down 
and one out in market it's probably a safer way to go i don't want these videos to go on too long so i like to just use the methods that i use if i was drawing myself and uh uh, quicker more efficient methods but it's only efficient if it's right so just don't don't push it i suppose really if you think you might make a mistake on the method then just do one at a time that right there is the true shape of the cut surface And we did that using an abatement of the oblique plane and an abatement of the cut surface on the oblique plane. That is about it for this question here. Um, once again, I always just try to add in a little bit of shading in to the surfaces. I think it just really makes these so much more uh, meaningful. There's a lot more to it when you come back and you're, if you get stuck in an exam question at a later stage, and you come back and you're seeing these sheets well you're going to think back to the learning you're going to be able to review the work you did and actually see the links so there we go on this one that is it um we have used our auxiliary view instead of our horizontal sections this time we have found our edge view of the plane and we have rebatted that edge view to find the true shape of the cut surface on to a more difficult question next now here in this next example you can see that we have a cone the horizontal and vertical trace is also shown and the oblique plane just in there now so when we cut a cone and we section through all generators on that cone so every generator all the way around the cone we get an ellipse so no matter what angle this plane lies at if we section through all generators in the cone we get an ellipse so the resulting cut right here the profile of that cut is as a true shape is an ellipse. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use the same methods as before. And we're going to, we're asked in the worksheet, I'm going to go back to in a minute, it says determine the intersection of the given object and the cutting plane, which is just like before, and also determine the true shape of the cut surface. So that's that's what we're going to do next. Um, I don't think I'd put the true shape in here just simply because the drawing is getting so busy. Um, what we want is we also want the elevation and the plan so there's the elevation and there's the plan so that's just shown as a circle we want to see what this cut surface this curve looks like in elevation and down in plan so that's going to be a bit of a challenge on paper for us first thing i did was i just broke up my uh, plan there 30 60 that's dropped in there and i drew all of my generators so that's just what I've done here on SolidWorks. So dropping in all of the generators there and showing all of those generators in the elevation. So that's just, that was my starting point and it was the first job I did um, on my drawing sheet. Next, we're going to look up along, we're going to find the edge view of the oblique plane. And of course, just like before, that will require an extra large horizontal plane here on SolidWorks. So that's what I did. And then project up in line with the horizontal trace pick our starting point and drop in our auxiliary vertical plane take our point on the trace and project it and the usual and get your edge view and just to really reinforce this one the point on the trace that we pick really doesn't matter because no matter how far down i go it will not affect the, the lay of this green line right here and that green line represents the edge view of the plane of course so i can take point p anywhere along that green line at all and as you can see it's not affecting the lay of the plane now i'm going to take it right out there leave it out of the way next thing is this this is a really important point i think as we project up in line looking along this vertical trace right here i need to see the extreme left generator and extreme right generator of the cone so in order to see that i need to have a line perpendicular to the trace going through the center point that gives me the extreme left and right so in this viewing direction right here a normal line per perpendicular line through the center will give me the extreme left and right now i think on my side of works i might have made this yeah i made this at 60 degrees so the 30 degree split line has done that already for me 
but that's what I'll do that on paper. It should make more sense on paper. But from where that red normal line now hits the left and right sides of the cone, they get projected up, and also the top of the cone gets projected here, and then we get our cone. Um, solid up as far as the plane and then it's only hidden from there on or it's just light detail because it's not actually visible it doesn't exist above that point it's being it's being cut it's being sectioned then i'm projecting up my base points of all my generators and going ahead and drawing the generators where the generators get cut at all the points where the generators get cut so there's the extreme one right here and there's the second generator and that that in on the SOLIDWORKS model here again that represents a pair of generators front and back there's this one i didn't take this one for now and there's a reason for that there's this one this one and this one where all those generators get cut i'm projecting them back down onto the onto the main 3d view sorry no onto the main 3d view and showing where all of those cut points are laying in plan so that we're going to be doing that on paper again but this is just it in 3d hopefully again help the understanding then there's this one this center one right here when i try to do that one on paper i unfortunately i can't just project it back down onto plan and the reason for that is this look in and we look closely well where we have that point and it's this one right here if I try to project it back down on the plan, all the other black lines will do something for me. This one won't, because when I look back down on plan, it's just falling directly in line with the generators. So it's not crossing them, as this one has, this black line has crossed its generator here. Every other line crosses the generator. When this black line is projected back down, it lies in line with the generator. So to solve that, we need a section cut. So that's what I've done there in red. Turn it there to a good view to see what's happening. In red there, I have my section cut. If I section through that center point and project down, and again, if you horizontal section through a cone, you get a circle. That's going to be the outside of the circle, left and right. And watch where the circle is down here. That's the plane, and that is the circle right there. And that circle gives me a point, front and back. So there's my curve, there it is. So it gives me the points on the generators to the front and to the back. Otherwise, these points would not be seen. If I look down in the plan again, it might make a bit more sense as to what that circle is doing. That sectioned circle right there gives me the point on the generator here at the back and out here at the front. The blue curve is the ellipse. It is the shape of the intersection or the big plane makes with the cone now this drawing is getting quite busy here there's a lot going on but with, nevertheless there's the cut and there's the ellipse okay in blue so we can clearly see what's happening taking all of those points from my 3d now and projecting them straight in onto my 2d onto my elevation and then there's the, these two key points right here. So as I look in at the elevation of the object, unfortunately, two points are not really apparent. And this, this will happen again. It's the very same as the last one there. Point A and point B, as we see them in plan, there they are. Point A out here at the front, point B back here at the back. They lie on this double generator, one going up, one out to the front, one out to the back. If I project point A up to the elevation, I get nothing because it just lies on the same line. So A and B, they're the two important points this time when we start trying to finish off our elevation. So if we can't get them from projecting them from plan, where do we get them from? We get them from the auxiliary. Okay, so in the auxiliary, that is the height of point A from the X, Y, X and Y one up to point A. I take that height of my compass, I bring it back in here. I strike it in the elevation like this. Okay. And this again, it will become very apparent on paper when we do this. Point B is the same. If I can't if I can't project up from the plan to find it, well I can definitely find it up here. So where is the height of point B? That's the height of point B. 
the correct height from the x y line x one y one line up to point b i take that height in my compass and i bring it back down here to plan and there we go we strike it up along that line and plan the corresponding line and and there we have it that's our that's our curve as it appears in the elevation right there using the perpendicular height off the ground up to point a and point b because they could not be simply projected up from plan we'll see that all in a while now and i think there might be is there one more left one more step left in it no actually that's it sorry that's it on paper we're going to also have to draw the plan of the curve which I'll, I'll go through that on paper that's the bit of understanding and background knowledge now there's a little bit more to this one of course than the last one anytime you bring in cones and spheres you're going to be upping your difficulty just a bit so our horizontal section here and our heights off the ground for points that can't be projected there for a and b they're the ones that are going to be the the key learning really and the key stages of this question so with that in mind let's get back onto paper let's get this question solved now here in the worksheet you'll see that we have our cone laid out in plan and elevation and the trace is given um lucky enough on this worksheet the horizontal trace is at 60 degrees so it saves us a good bit of hassle it just means that a lot of projections are going to line up with each other there's the ht and the vt if the horizontal trace is at 60 degrees, I need a 30 degree normal through the point center of the uh, the center of the cone right there. And what that does for me is it gives me a projection point left and right. That's all. When I'm viewing in the direction of the horizontal trace. Before that though, I'm going to view up in the direction of the horizontal trace. So there's my viewing direction right there. Up along the horizontal trace, I'm going to pick a point in there and I'm going to draw my x1 y1 I have my normal dropped in and this is the same for any any auxiliary view you'll ever do whatever your viewing angle is you need to be viewing along 90 degrees to that to see your extremes of the object that point is on the ground that point is on the ground and that point is up in the air how tall? Well, the apex is the same height in each elevation based on that plan. We're just going to put the text just a little bit. No worries, we'll drop it in a minute. And there is the auxiliary view of the object. But that's the full object. Now I need to break it down and I need to go ahead and find my oblique plane. There's point P in the elevation, point P in plan, projected, and height taken. Which gives me edge view of the oblique plane now I'm just before I move on now and start getting into this question I'd like to just have everything nice and clear up here what is and what is not contained on the object and there, there I have my cone yes that's the remains of the cone that's what's down there um, I'm going to go and do exactly what I did do on SolidWorks. I'm going to break up this cone into a selection of generators. Now, I already have, I'm going to call that point zero as the apex is zero up top, zero up here. I already have, do you know, I might as well just start with number one right there. I have zero, one. I have zero, two. And then let's go ahead and find the rest. Okay. That's it, that's all I found out. Two, there's zero, three, zero, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
and 12. So there's 12 generators coming down from the apex down to the ground. It really doesn't matter what way you number them. Uh, my usual way is I'd start on the left here with number one, but um, just because that generator is already there, it's the extreme left, I use this as number one. I'm going to draw those in elevation. And what you'll see there is that they all pair up, they match. So on every point on the ground there, I'm going to have two generators labelled. Number two. So what we're looking at here is as we looked in at our normal elevation, number two is on the extreme left and number eight is on the extreme right. As we change our viewing direction and we move around, number one is on the extreme left and number seven is on the extreme right. So that's a one and a seven. So we're viewing the object from a different angle. This is up here in the main elevation, so one and three. One comma three. Starting with the one in front near you. So Twelve comma four. Eleven and five. Ten and six. And then nine and seven. Nine comma seven. And I'm gonna really lightly just drop those in. I probably have to go a little bit heavier than I'd like to actually so that they be seen in the video. There's all my generators in the main elevation. Now, up here in the auxiliary. Can I label any more? I can. One is on the left, seven is on the right, ten and four are already here. So ten and four are there. So, twelve and two. Twelve and two there. Eleven and three. Uh, ten and four are already marked. Nine and five. And eight and six. Once again, I'm drawing them heavier than I'd like to, but hopefully, they'll come out and be visible on the video. Eleven and three, and finally, eleven and two. Now, a couple of little points of note here. I could take, if I if I did put in the projection now, a line perpendicular to the ground up and let's say take the height up to the cut on number seven and mark it up onto the cut on number seven because they would all be perfect true heights. I could do that, no problem. But what I'd like to really emphasize here is that what I have just done is I have a cut on line number one. I have a cut on line number 12 and two 11 and 3, 10 and 4, 9 and 5, 8 and 6 and 7. Basically, I have a point on each line. And that's it. It's just a point on a line. If I have a line in my auxiliary elevation here, and if I have that same line in plan, and I have a point on the line, I can just project that point. So, without talking through it too much, I want to just get going with this, okay? I'm going to... I might pick a nice light colour if I don't lose all my equipment there in the next few minutes. I'll pick a pink colour maybe. I'm going to start here at the top. That point lies on the line 07, the line 07. I want to take that point down onto the line 07. And that's a point on the cut. I then have two points on the lines 8 and 6, so 0 to 8 and 6, which is... Eight, six. I have two points in the lines. Nine and five. Nine, five. I have two points in the lines ten and four, but if I project that down, they fall along the same path. I get nothing out of that. So I'm going to skip that one for now because I can't solve it. What are my next ones there? That's eleven and three. Three is there. 11 is there. So along the line 0, 11, I get that point. Along the line 0, 3, I get this point. I have 12 and 2. Along the line 0, 12. And along the line 0, 2. And finally, I have this extreme left number 1. That gives me a lot of info right there. I have most of my cuts done now. Okay? 
most of it is there. I wouldn't usually do this, but I just want to, so that it's very clear what I'm working with, and I really wouldn't encourage, you don't start drawing a profile until you have all of your points, but just so that it's clearer on the video, hopefully. That is what I have right now. So I have most of my points. I actually have 10 out of 12. I'm just missing the point from 0, 04 and 0, 010. And projecting them is no good because they still fall along the same line. So this was my previous point here that I was making. So what I'm going to do, and I'll keep with the colour scheme here if I can. I need to find the point 10, 4. I'm going to parallel to the ground, which means it's a horizontal section foot. Okay, horizontal section foot. That horizontal section cut, how do I find it? Well, along 0, 07, which is really what I can see down in plan correctly, there it is. Okay, that is the horizontal section cut. I'm going to draw it. Horizontal section cut through a cone is a circle. So there's my circle right there. I'm going to break one of my own rules that you should never do. You never go over a profile with a colour, but I just want to uh, I want to make it stand out. That horizontal section cut that goes through the points 10 and 4 looks like that circle. Along that circle, it captures number 4 right here, and it captures number 10 right here. So the horizontal section gives us the points that we need. And then I can finish off my curves. There we go. So that's the plan of those curves right there. Or the plan of the profile of the curve. And there it is. That's the if I just add a bit of shade, I should grab a pencil or a colour and pencil for this. I just add a little bit of shade in there, shade in the surface to make it stand out. That is the profile of the surface as it appears in plan. That's the surface or that is resulting from the section by the oblique plane. Now, there we go. That's the first part of section A, we'll say, of this question, and it's just the first part. That's the plan of the profile. Now we need the elevation of the profile. So this is kind of where it gets interesting again. I'm going to just highlight my points just that little bit again so that we can see them clearly on the video. There's all my points. Most of these are easy because I can just take them straight up. It's a, again, it's a point on a line and nothing else. To, we won't overcomplicate these things. I'm going to start on what's on the extreme, number two. Along number two, I have a point. Next one in is number one. number one I have a point. Next one in is three. Now number three. Oh, so I have a point there. And notice the way that we have two points along the same what appears as the same generator. They are two generators, one at the back and one at the front. Number one at the front is a lower down point on the cut. See that? Much much as it goes from the apex down, it's a much lower point than number three. Next one is number 12. Next one is number 4. Now, here's the problem. 11 and 5. When I project them, I have no idea. They all fall perfectly in line, so I can't do them for now. I'm going to go keep going on there to number six for now. Six. Then ten. After that is seven, I think would be my next one. Eight. 
then no, and then it. And this is getting quite tight around here. Something like that though, that's what it looks like. And again, I'll break one of my own rules here. I just start, I'm going to start just dropping in the curve. I'm going to keep it lighter this time. I like a flowing curve to go through the points so at least we know this. We know what we should be sketching and we'll get the right curvature, nice smooth curvature. So that's what we're going for. We need points. What are they? Number 5 to the back and 11 to the front. So there's going to be an 11 here someplace and a 5 here someplace. Where are they? We need to go back up to the we need to go back up to the um auxiliary for this. That's probably the easiest way. There's a second method here. We could do another horizontal section. We could section through eleven, which would give us a circle. And the circle would end over here someplace. Up and across to find this. So showing our section would be one way, but the way I'm going to go about it here, I might just grab a green a green fine liner for this job. I'm looking for eleven and I'm looking for five. So 11 is that height on the ground. That's up to number 11. And 5 is up there. 5 is that height on the ground. Number 5. I need to get my compass next. What's the smaller one? The smaller one's 11. 11 is that height off the ground. Why is that height off the ground? And there we go. 11 and 5. Now, that gives us in elevation the surface as it appears having been cut or sectioned by the oblique plane right there. I'm going to pause the video for just a minute, add a little bit of colour and then we will finally, that is this much done, we're going to finally then get on to the true shape. So to resume this video and <clears throat> finish off the final stage of the question, hopefully the little bit of shading helps to see the object and see everything about it and uh, get a greater understanding of the detail here. Final part of the question is also determine the true shape of the cut surface using the auxiliary method. Now you won't be you won't be specified in an exam. You can use whatever method you want. You could rebat about the point view of the trace, rebat it down into the ground and bring it out. No problem. That's my preferred method. Using the auxiliary method is quite simple. There's absolutely no issue at all with it. Um, space can be sometimes the issue with either method. If you've no space left down here, an auxiliary might be more suitable. If you've no space up here, your rebatment is more suitable. So, same results, two different methods. Let's go with what they asked. We want to use the auxiliary method to find the true shape of the cut surface. Basically, what we're looking for is this. <coughs> if you have a surface, and if you can find an edge view of the surface, then you can look perpendicular to the edge view. This right here is an edge view of the cut surface. If I look perpendicular to that edge view, looking out or in, we get a true shape. So if you're looking straight at it, you get your true shape. So I'm just going to set up my adjustable in line with that edge view, in line with the edge view of the oblique plane. <coughs> I'm going to go, do you know what, I think it's going to be really tight with the text I have on my sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and project all the way over here. And, you know, some people are probably thinking, oh, should I be crossing my elevation here with projection lines? It absolutely does not matter. Because you keep your projection lines light and you draw your new view there is no issue with crossing a view while i'm here while i'm set up and because we're coming back to stage where we've done a lot of drawing now i'm going to project everything okay and once again if you don't feel like doing that project one at a time there's no problem 
I'm projecting all of those points now. The fine liners, I don't like overdoing drawings with fine liners. I don't like having a huge amount of it. But what it does do for me, just the dots here and there on the key points mean that I know that that's not a key point because that's the point P that I used to structure my plane. I think that should be it. Okay, so one, two, along each element I should have, along each generator I should have my points. So one there, one there, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's all fine. Next, I'm going to put my position parallel to the cut surface, perpendicular to the projections. I'm going to drop in. It's kind of like an X1, Y1 now, okay? Or an X2, Y2 in this case. But what I'll do is this, okay? If we were doing this as normal, and if this was my x2, y2 for a second auxiliary, the distances would come from skipping my view and working back. What we'd also think of is this. It's an elevation, project down to a plan. Project up to an elevation, project down to a plan. This plan links to skip one it links to this plane. So the distances I should be taking right now are here, right there. But that's gone way off, off the sheet. So I'm going to do something much better than that. I'm going to take the angle of, let's just, I'm going to grab a colour for this now to make this a bit more, <coughs> a bit more clear. I'm going to take the angle of the X1, Y1 line right here. And I'm going to go ahead and instead of making all distances that big, I'm going to shorten it and bring that X to my one and bring a reference line right down. And you know, I'm going to put it right here in the middle of the object. Okay. Ref line or reference line right there. That's the reference line I'm going to use to draw this object. Okay, to draw this view right here. So that reference line is going to pair up with this reference line here. Now, what do we do with that? Well, instead of taking these huge distances all the way down, we are now going to put our compass on the reference line. And we're going to take the distances left and right of the reference line. First off, we need to understand this. There's two points lying on the line. So number one and number seven are on the line. One is on the line. Seven is on the line. Seven and one. I need to take my distances just like I would if it was your traditional style um, second auxiliary. I'd have to have a straight line to take my distances along. Okay, so I'm going to draw those straight lines right now. I'm going to drop them in a different colour again with a light purple here. That's this distance here. This one here. So it's these distances I'm working with. What we'll find is that it's symmetrical. Very obvious once you start drawing those lines that the object is symmetrical, so it saves us quite a bit of hassle. Now, one is here at the front, I'm going to take the distance out towards 2 and 12, and again it being symmetrical. So 2 and 12 falling on the same line, 2 and 12. Next thing we're out to 3 and 11. We're going out to 4 and 10. Four and ten. We're going out to, what's that, 9 and 5. 9 and 5. And finally, getting really small. Uh, what's that? Sorry, that glass on the 10, 4, 9, 5. And this is 6 and 8. And it's getting really small now. Six and eight. And finally seven is there on the end of the ellipse. So 
There we go. We freehand it in. And despite it being quite a small drawing, we should see that we end up getting an ellipse. Accuracy can be a bit of a nightmare in these sometimes with the small A4 style worksheets. Um, it can be really hard to keep our keep all of those little projections and and detail lines and freehand curves and everything really accurate. Um, I'm gonna once again add in my little bit of shading here into this guy. Wouldn't really be suggesting a huge amount of shading in an exam scenario. You're not really gonna have time. You know you're gonna want to spend your time doing the questions and solving questions. A little bit of colour here and there can sometimes help, but you know, detailed shading is great for practice work, not so much for an exam scenario. Now, there we go, and in there I'm going to put the note of true shape. So there's that second last question for this video done. Nice difficult little one there um, for us to work on this time. Um, I really should, I might just take a few seconds uh, after the video just get a bit of a finer curve going on this one right here. Oh, that, that's not bad now. Um, but this question, a bit of a challenge in it there, a lot of thinking. It's the uh, couple of points where couple of points along the generator spread they just happen to all line up with the generators and we have to just problem solve and think of horizontal sections or as we viewed up along into the elevation we think of taking some heights or again we could have done more horizontal sections through 11 and through 5 there wouldn't have been a problem but taking the heights up here height in one elevation marked as a height in another elevation but of course not taking a distance along a line. That would never work unless they're true lengths in both views. Now, there we have our true shape and our finished drawing for this one. Let's get on to our last one for this video, on two spheres. Oh, you'll be delighted to know that this is the final object on this video. And um, for this object, we're looking at a uh, sphere. Now, I have just dropped up in a cylind cylindrical stand here just to raise it up off the horizontal plane just that little bit but the cylindrical stand won't really uh, feature as a as an integral part of this drawing basically the horizontal and vertical traces are shown and there is the oblique plane and we can see it doesn't cut through the stand it just cuts through the sphere only and well, again i'm not going to focus much on the basics here we've kind of seen a lot of these now and worked through a lot at this stage but it's a different type of of challenge this time there's the elevation of the stand and the uh, sphere there is the plan of the stand and sphere so a hidden stand and then the overall sphere just as it's shown as a circle um we're going to look up along and see our edge view of the plane see what the object looks like and see the whole cut up there projecting up along the horizontal trace and just like previous drawings uh, showing our auxiliary vertical plane right there um, <clears throat> next thing, we will go ahead and get our whatever point P you want along the way, which will give us the edge view, sorry no, will give us the edge view of the oblique plane as shown. We're going to project up and find our um, object in this view. Now, of course, we'll, we'll be focusing back to what we looked at last time. And I didn't draw it there, but this red line, the normal, which gives us the extreme left and the extreme right points in relation to the viewing direction. Once we have the object drawn, then the fun starts really. What we're looking at at this point is this, okay, if I just zoom, go back one step. I want to find the profile. I want to find the selection of points along this profile right here. Um, there are no... <coughs> generators or elements let's move that down out of the way there there are no straight line elements on a uh, there are no straight line elements on a sphere so if i can't use elements and straight lines i need to use sections and circles so what i'm looking at is this i'll section parallel to the top plane and i'm going to section it and if i bring it right up along to 
I'm looking for this point here where the plane exits the object. Right up along to there. That's my section right now. I want to section it where the plane, the oblique plane, exits the circle. So right there. What does that do for me? Well, a section, a horizontal section through a sphere will, will give me a circle. And that circle will give me a point right there where the plane exits the object. And then I'll go ahead and I'll section again. And every part that I section this, if I just drop down along there, everywhere I section this object gives me two points on the profile. So the profile being the intersection between the oblique plane and the sphere. So every section I take gives me, well, one point at the top and one at the bottom. So first of all, so if I just go down to this one right here, I'll drop right down until I get to that point, which is there. This one right here, I, I should see that I'll get a circular profile exiting, touching the um, oblique plane. And there we are, there's our circular profile, and it's touching there someplace at one particular point only, touching the oblique plane. So, using a range of horizontal sections, we're going to build up the plan. So we'll horizontally section on the auxiliary view, and at every horizontal section, it gives me a point to the front and to the back of the uh, profile of the cut. What does that look like and what will it look like on paper? So I've kind of sketched it out here. There's the pink horizontal section. That can be projected on down and shown here in the plan view of the object. And that gives me one point. Okay, so there's the one point, the one point where the plane exits the circle, projected down onto the cut, giving me that same one point here in plan. Then it's just a series of repetition of the same, same principle over and over. Um, my next one is going to be this red one right here, section true at the end point. See what it looks like in plan. And actually, I just dropped in my other one, two, three more there as well at this stage. And there we are, projecting them down to plan, showing what they looked like, and then projecting the points onto the profile. And there we get our profile. So that's the profile. I think I might have even done a surface cut there at this stage. Yeah, surface cut, and I've just put a bit of color onto it to see what the profile looks like. So our selection of horizontal sections will give us points on the section so we horizontally section we draw what that full circular profile looks like so that being this one right here this is the top one and then we take the two points on the profile and we project them down to hit and we get a point at the back a point at the front then of course we're going to have to show what that looks like that'll be done in plan already and then we'll also have to see what it looks like in the elevation in here now that's that's going to be it. I'm not going to do a true shape for this one because simply we've we've done true shape for the for the uh, auxiliary method on the cone. We've done the true shape using rebatments here. We have plenty of practice at true shape, but just different object here and a different style challenge for us. But really, it's just um, a selection of horizontal sections to find some points on the um, intersection between the oblique plane and this sphere. So let's get back to paper. I've already set up the question. I'll have a quick run through the measurements I used or the rough measurements I used so that you can set it up yourself at home. Now, here's the question set up and ready to go for me, just for you doing this at home. I think I set the radius of my compass here to a little 8mm there for the little cylindrical stand and about 46mm then in total there for the radius of the main sphere. Working up into the elevation, then I went up, and I think from my x y line up to the center, I measured forty seven or forty eight mil or so up off the ground there for the center of the sphere. I just my adjustable was set to fifty two degrees, so I left it at fifty two, and it really doesn't matter, you know, for the horizontal trace. And I ran my vertical trace then from that point and just stayed a few mil away. Again, like it, it really doesn't matter if uh, if my question is set up slightly different to the one that you'll do at home. It doesn't matter because 
we'll still have, be working with the same principles and practices no matter what so moving on from there and working on up into just what we've been doing the last couple of times look up along the trace drop in your x1 y1 and we'll take any point p on the trace in elevation we bring it down to its position in plan project it and we will transfer the height of the point p from the elevation to the elevation and there's my edge view of the oblique plane I'm going to go ahead now and take up the center of the sphere center of the sphere is at this height here what did I say I think I made that 48 mil or something that's the center of it the radius of the sphere is the same the sphere is the same circle in every single view so that right there is the center point and keep it light outside heavy inside I now want to project up the this little cylinder that's here parallel to the trace line but the problem is I don't know what point I'm projecting until I go at 90 degrees and find the projection points which will be here on the left hand side that is solid enough to the there and just here on the right hand side and again solid there if those two objects were merging then we would have a straight line here representing the circle of contact around the uh, that the cylinder makes all the way around the sphere so that is the that is the three-dimensional or sorry that is the um, auxiliary view set up now with the edge view of the oblique plane with the horizontal plane and that sits on the x1 Y1 line just there. I'm going to pause the video for just a second. I'd like to add just a little bit of color around the portion of this object that I know is still going to be there after the oblique plane has sectioned the rest. So I'll just pause the video, add a little bit of color here. So there's just a little bit of color added to the um, sphere. I meant to add a little bit of color here as well. Um, I like to, like once again, I like adding just a little bit of colour in these. I think that it just helps when we do get back again to studying these, if they're going to be used as some sort of study note. And even for me then, as I'm trying to work through this here on paper, it's nice that uh, I can reference the colours as well as I'm teaching my way through the drawings. Um, that's it for the um, auxiliary there so the auxiliary is finished now we need to kind of move back and we need to use this auxiliary and the fact that we have an edge view of the oblique plane to bring information back down to plan back up to elevation where the understand the understanding for this has to come from here okay as we view in the direction of the ht there okay as we view in the direction of the ht what can be seen in the auxiliary view is everything that happens perpendicular to our viewing direction. So along a perpendicular line to our viewing direction, so our viewing direction here is in line with the HT. Well, the, everything that is being seen in the auxiliary as a true size and a true shape is this perpendicular section right here. So to, to take that a little bit further, what I'm going to do is I have my angle set up for my HT. I'm going to draw just that little perpendicular I already need it. I'll just extend that out through left and right. So when we were looking at this little cylinder right here, we had to use our perpendicular to our viewing direction. So we had our viewing direction here and then we went perpendicular. That gave us the left and right side of the cylinder as it appears in that view. The next important thing, and I, I, I drew this on solid works, the next important thing is this, okay, 
what we're looking at is this if we want a horizontal section plane to cut through the object it's parallel to the horizontal plane parallel to the ground and through let's just say we'll start off with this top point here that horizontal section plane will result in a circle down here likewise as i did in, as well there in the, on the model we were looking at that horizontal section plane will result in a circle down here but we don't need to draw them in this case here and just for these two points we actually don't need to draw them because that is the exit point here so the red the red point would be there i could draw the full circle but that's what's happening along that line because we're seeing on that line that's perpendicular to our line of vision and our viewing direction that is what's happening on the far left hand side here and similarly at the top point i'm going to call that the exit point so that the plane enters the object and cuts it here and exits up here on the exit point up at the top i have A point here so that gives me the start and finish of this profile I need some more now to go in between okay so I need some extra cuts to go in here um, I'm gonna pick just a different color to hopefully will stand out and if I just work through the center of the object that's the center right there and if I put that section cut in in green there where is it in plan so if I bring it down to plan I'll bring down this outer point right here and what I find here is that it's it's the outer profile that's already shown in plan. As you can imagine, it's been sectioned through at the biggest possible uh, point, through the center point. So it is the profile as it sits in plan. Uh, on that green profile, and the green profile is the outer, on that green profile, we get two cut points. So I know that when I draw my freehand curve, it's gonna to touch here and it's going to touch here now i need some extras and how many extras do you need well that's completely up to yourself really you need as many as you need to make it look good and to make and to, to ensure that you have finished your drawing correctly um, i'm going to drop one in and I'm, I'm just going to completely guess a point i'm going to pick a point halfway down between the green and red and i'm going to drop one section right there I'll go with that one for now, see what that ends up like. Now, that section, horizontal section, right here. I know. That horizontal section here. Reveals a circle. Based on the same centre point, of course. It just reveals this circle. Now, there we are. I'm not going to fully draw them circles because I know I don't need them. I'm going to call that, that's plane one in red. I'm going to call that plane number two there in orange. So I'll just number them all. Number one was in red and I didn't need to do the cutting really because that was point number one. Number two was in orange. Number three is in green. And again, I didn't need to do the anymore because it lies on the outer. I'm going to prop I'm probably going to put in two more, four, five, and finally number six up here in top is in pink. Number six. On plane number two, the red, or sorry, the orange plane I just drew, and I'm going to break one of my own rules here again because I don't like doing this, but I just don't have a compass at the moment for for these curves. But that is the orange section right there. On that orange section, I have two cut points here so where are they for the section where the section cut crosses the projection we get a point on the curve number two oh sorry i just put the wrong one there so that's number two and number two okay two and two then moving up what I want to do here is I just want to be a bit clever about this and I want to use the work I've already done. If I put another section plane in here and it just happens to project 
perfectly down on top of the orange one it just means I can use the same circle it saves me a lot of hassle really if I work when I did this projection here I extend this up through and it hits there that is my next one that I'm going to use and I'm going to put it in purple and it'll, it's going to just be over the orange one okay so that's going to be plane number four and as I said it just when I project it down it lines up with the orange one so I don't need to go drawing it again I know it's the same size circle as the orange one there so number four also projects down and hits where am I now it hits there and four and all the way through there at point four let's drop one more in there running out of colors at this stage i have brown one here and i just drop a cut in at that size and i call that plane number five let's project down plane number five and draw the circle There's, there's section cut number five right there. Again, I don't like doing this, but I just don't have a compass at the moment for my fine liners. So there we go. That's what the section at number five looks like. It looks like that circle right there. And somewhere along that section, here, I get some points on the profile. Five and five. Well, I know for a fact that I'd, I'd like to be able to, um, I'd like to add in more points here, but it's just going to get really busy. If you're doing this at home, well, by all means, I would be think, definitely thinking that it's a long way there from five to six. I'd be adding in an extra plane, maybe there between five and six, especially. We're not too bad everywhere else. It's, it's, it's okay to get around the rest. Maybe one more there between one and two. And one more between five and six for certain. I'm going to go with what I have at the moment. I'm going to just freehand in the profile now. So three to two. All the way down there to one. I'm feeling back up to two and three. Then changing direction. I'm going back in around to four. Five. Yeah, it's a long, long way up here to freehand it. But I'm going to go with it as I said. Six down to five, down to four, down to three. There. Now, I really need to take a, a few seconds to clean up this curve, which I might do if I'm pausing the video for a bit of color. I might just clean up that curve a little bit. But in theory, that's that's what the cut section looks like as we view back down on top of it in plan, starting at point six up at the top and going all the way down to point one. So six up at the top down to point one down low there and that's our section cut so i am actually going to take a minute now to pause the video i'm going to add a little bit of light uh, color onto this guy here just to hopefully uh when you add that color it starts to maybe make a bit more sense because at the moment it looks like i've just put a freehand curve there and it doesn't really make sense just yet so let's pause for a minute you do the same add some color Add, add a little bit of tone to it and hopefully it'll start to uh, come together and make more sense then we'll move on to our elevation and there we go that's the plan view of this object finished so now moving on to the elevation next and i'm going to just take all of the heights of the same planes that i have so i'm going to draw a plane one two three four five and six i'll take their heights i'll transfer them and draw all the planes in the elevation and i'll bring my points onto the relevant plane so the heights, I'm going to take them all along the center line that I already have here. So I have a center line up through the object and then I have the, the position of every plane. So that's plane one. And as I've said so many times in this video, if you feel comfortable taking them all just like I do, then do it this way. If you don't feel comfortable with it, please just do one at a time. We already have three, that's the center of the object. There's four. 
There's five. And last six. If I can get all of my colours together now here and uh, I will have plane number one. That's the first horizontal section plane right there. Plane number two next. Plane number three. Number four. If I can find the colour. Something similar. Number four. Number five there in brown. And finally, number six in pink. And there I have the exact same um, height taken from one elevation and brought to the other. That gives me position of all six section planes that I used to find all of these points. Now I'm going to take the relevant point. There's my red point one up onto point one. And I'm going to work from there. So that's the next step. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to transfer all points up and mark them on the on the correct planes in elevation, freehand in the curve. So I've just found my points now. They're all just projected up, and <clears throat> I just think for a question like this, the bit of colour is just so easy to follow. So my pink point six projects straight up onto pink line six. Um, brown points five and five here project up to his plane five and plane five so it, you know and so on it just makes the whole thing so much easier um i think that there's less room for error as well which is huge in a question like this um where am i going from here i hit my low point one it probably drops it well oh, that's actually the lowest point of the cut actually yeah it has to be the lowest point of the cut so Point one there is my turning point for the profile, and it turns back up again here. Something like this reminds you of those pieces of um, modern furniture, like the pod chair. And this is like the opening to the pod chair here. Now that we're that we're showing here in the elevation, you know. So when you have your sphere cut at an angle, just like this, um, I'm going to once again just pause the video and uh, add my little bit of colour in now and one final chat then to finish. So there we go, that's the question kind of finished. I just realised there as I was starting to add the bit of tone onto this one that I think if I was a bit more careful, maybe a bit more accurate, I'd find my point six a little bit higher up here and that would be where my circular profile should end actually should be up there as well you know so or close 2.6 so i just merged in the blue color and same down here like really it cuts the whole thing the blue circle can't continue on so it has to stop now look it's 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 really um it's a use of this concept and the use of the practice and principle that, that i wanted to go for um and i think we've hit that here um just little point of note there on on six and that would be two the widest point here or at some point along the way i suppose i should be freehanding the curve a little bit wider there which will mean that the orange profile goes all the way out and stops the blue profile um if we were asked here for a uh true shape of us of the cut surface then we could either again we could maybe look out at 90 degrees to that projecting out here or you could rebat it down onto the ground the interesting thing is of course any section cut at all through a sphere will be a circle um, so whether it's uh, <coughs> a horizontal section a vertical section or an inclined section like this any section cut would have a true shape of, of a circle so if we went and rebat it 
the point one, the two points at two, two at three, two at four, two at five, and the one at six, and we're batting them down to here, we should end up with a perfect circle down below. Um, that is uh, that is kind of it for this video. I think now this uh, I've kind of taken these objects now. I've taken oblique planes. I've um, put as many questions together here as I can in this series of videos on oblique planes and uh, simply inclined planes and so on. That might be enough to really get a good understanding of oblique planes and simply inclined planes, how they work, how they can be viewed and manipulated and moved, uh, rebatted and so on. And when we put objects in, what style of question can be included when we include an object under an oblique, oblique plane? Some of the older Leavenser questions also included objects laying on the oblique plane, which were very interesting as well, where maybe with an object now uh, pyramid lay with a base on the oblique plane and just came up from here. You know, really it's just an extension of the same knowledge and the same principles and practices that you've seen in the last three videos here. Um, that's it for now. I hope there, the videos have been helpful. And if there's anyone that would like to see any other videos, if there's anything else that you feel would be helpful or you'd like to uh, see, just drop a comment under this. Thanks very much for watching.